how do you have dependent drop down lists without app script? Well, it's not as hard as you might think. I'll walk through this in this video and show you how we have this color list that's dependent on the item and then the size list that's dependent on the color. So I change it to white and now I've instantly got different sizes available in the white skateboard than I did in say the green skateboard. And same thing with the rollerblades, I've got different colors available than I did with the skateboard and as well different sizes in the yellow rollerblade. How is this working? Well, I've also got some app script that we can throw on there. That was previously working without app script. Uh, but if I put app script on here, I can make those other two selections clear out anytime I make a change. So it won't give me that error that pops up uh, that will warn me if I have already selected a size, for instance, in a skateboard that's actually not available in a blue bike. Uh, but now if I change this color, the size will go away and it will reset to these options and I don't have to fool with uh, possibly having an error in any of these cells. Okay, let's turn the app script back off. We'll go that over that at the end. That's icing on the cake because it does work. See, I've commented all that out. The app script is off, if you will, and it works fine. All we're using are some built-in functions and it's built around the indirect function. So if you've ever wondered for a use case in the real world for an indirect function, this is one of, you know, I've used it several times. It's a cool function. Let's open up what we're doing here. I've got four other tables down here and I'm using all of these in built in the, the new built in Google Sheets tables. And what I have here is a types table. So we've got the types of item that we want in our first drop down list. If I open up the data validation rules, you can see that I'm just pulling this from the types table right here, bike, skateboard, and rollerblade. Okay, drop down from a range. Then we've got our colors. So I've defined the colors that are available in, whoops, let's get rid of that. I define the colors available in each of these items. So the different colors to illustrate the different drop down lists. Then we've broken that out further. So we've got black sizes, green sizes, teal sizes, blue, orange, yellow, red, and white, so forth and so on. So we've broken this up into a larger array of the available sizes per color. And then finally down here, this is actually the table, this yellow one called combos. This is where the dynamic changes happen. So um, if I come up here and make a change to black, then this table down here will actually update the sizes. So if I change that to yellow, you see these sizes have changed. And similarly, if I change this to bike, then the colors have changed. Okay, how is that working? Well, it's it's just one formula. It's this indirect formula. So what indirect is going to do, if I could open this back up, it's a cell reference specified by a string. So that means, open this up further, it's going to return a cell reference specified by this string. So the string in our case is being held up here in A2. It's this bike string. And what I've done is I've defined named ranges for all of these strings. And here is the range for bikes. It's this blue, black, and red color portion of this color table. So when I select bike from this drop down list, way down here in combos, this is saying, hey, return to me all the information that's in that bike named range. So another way to illustrate this is if we didn't have the indirect function here, but rather we had just A10 through A12 in an array formula, it's returning the same thing. What's A10 through A12? Well, it's, it's this section right here. It's the bike named range. So by using indirect, we can actually say return the items in the named range at cell A2 or specified in cell A2. Now the same exact thing is happening here for our sizes. This is going to return all of the items in the named range specified by the string in B2. And in B2 up here, that's our color. So the blue in this case named range, I've, I've defined it right here. 
and it's going to return these blue sizes, small, medium, extra large, double X, and triple X. And there they are right there. If I change this to red, then it's returning the red named range, which is over here, small, medium, large, XL, and double XL right there. So that's all that's going on here. And the, the thing that happens though, if you have one of these, let's find one that gives me an error. Uh, yeah, right here. If we have a skateboard defined, uh, or if we change the item to a skateboard after we had it as a black bike, then it's going to pop up an error because we have not said that there's a black skateboard right here. We've got green, orange, white, are the only valid uh, offerings. But the way the named ranges work, it will allow us to have an error there and to, to basically say invalid instead of just rejecting that. That's where AppScript can come and make things a little bit cleaner. As I showed you earlier in the video, this AppScript lets us check every time we make a change to one of these cells and then it will clear out the values in the other cells so that we don't ever have a potential error hanging that we don't see. What this does is on opening at the top here, it's just clearing the content of selection. So again, I've got a bunch of named ranges and selection is A2 through C2. So it's just these three items that we're selecting. So let me show you when I reload the sheet, the first thing that's going to happen once it loads is it's going to clear out those items. I didn't have to do anything for that to happen because on load, I just want a fresh slate. Then on edit, we're going to do a few things. We're going to grab the sheet, then we're going to grab the selection, and we're going to grab the current cell and the edited cell, and we're going to get the A1 notation. That just means like where the cell is in A1 notation. So A1 notation for this cell is B3. That's the, the location of that cell. And it's going to check. It's going to say, hey, if the cell is in A2, then we're going to get the range B2 through C2 and clear the content. So that's saying if I edit A2 right here, and let me put some values in here to prove what I'm doing works. It's going to say if I edit A2 and change it from skateboarding to bike, then clear the selection here in B2 through C2. Similarly, else if it's B2 that we're editing, then we're going to clear the content in C2. So if we had B2 edited right like this, then it's just going to clear the content in C2. I thought this was a lot of fun to do. It's one of those that I don't know why I haven't done this project before now. Um, it takes a little bit of setting up because you've got to actually define all of the things that depend upon one another. But if you're using this for anything in the real world, you have these things defined for you. That's the whole point of having the multiple dependent dropdown lists. So this should be pretty easy to get into a format that you can use in your own project. Hope it's helpful for you. Let me know if it was by thumbs up in, liking the video, subscribing to my channel if you find these tutorials helpful. And importantly, there is a link down below to my free newsletter where you can sign up, get this free sheet emailed to you, and I will send you a bunch of other free demo sheets here over the coming week. There's a lot of cool stuff there. I write about projects like this every week and send out demo sheets and videos to everyone on that list. Hope you'll consider joining that. And if nothing else, have an awesome day. Talk to you next time.